So the bold and beautiful camera array at the back of your Galaxy S21 Ultra makes it stand out from the crowd and there are some certain features in the camera software of this smartphone that enables you to control, modify or enhance the photo and videography to get you that dramatic photographic or cinematic shots. So without any further ado, let's get started with this camera tips and tricks tutorial. Now unlike others, there is no separate macro camera on the S21 Ultra. Instead, Samsung is giving you the option to use the wide angle camera as the macro camera and there is an option for that. So whenever you are taking a picture of a very close subject with the main camera, if you click here, that is this icon for focus enhancer, it automatically switches to the wide angle camera which is macro enabled. You can also go wider because it's equipped with the wide angle lens. So when you are using the main camera, you go closer, the focus enhancer switches to the wide angle camera which basically crops into the photo to make it look like the main camera which is 26 mm. But I suggest you to go to the wide angle lens because the quality will be better you will get more dramatic photos and you can also go much closer the photos might look slightly distorted which some of you might like if you don't want it there is an option in the camera settings to minimize the lens distortion so this is the first trick i want to share with you guys enable focus enhancer for macro photos the quality is better than most of the dedicated macro lens cameras so that's a great feature of the galaxy s21 ultra in addition to enhancing the focus there is scene optimizer which basically uh, detects the object and uh, sets the camera parameters accordingly so maybe you are taking a picture of a car or maybe a tree outside a moving object or uh, let's say you are taking a picture at night in low light then the scene optimizer switches to night mode for low light or maybe you are taking a picture of a document then the scene optimizer can set the parameters in fact if you enable this dedicated document scan then it can do a distortion free scan of your documents now there is another feature i personally don't find reliable but it's there and some of you who are confused what angle would be better or let's say your friends are always telling you are a bad photographer then you can take help of this feature called short suggestions where you will see a white bubble on the subject so just line up the viewfinder on that bubble and the ai of the camera thinks it's a good shot but sometimes it's not perfect like this one i don't think it's a good framing what do you think guys Instead of relying on auto, if you want real manual control of your photography, then Pro Mode is something you should definitely try. In low light or indoor photos, the camera tends to increase the ISO level, which makes it grainy, but you can lock the maximum ISO to maybe 160 or 200 decrease the shutter speed to maybe 1 by 20 or 1 by 15 but uh, with handheld photography that may be a problem because your photos will be shaky so you can either use a tripod or uh, keep the phone on a table this is how you can take amazing quality low light indoor photos shutter speed control is also useful if you are taking picture of a moving object like your kids or maybe a moving car so you can keep the shutter speed let's say 1 by 200 but that will also increase the iso level because of less light if you are indoor of course but it's better to have a slightly noisy picture instead of a hazy one i always do this with my kids it also makes the shutter response faster so that i don't miss the shot so there is a good correlation in between ISO and shutter and uh, you can be the judge of what you actually want. You can slow out the shutter speed to maybe 10, 15 or maybe up to 30 seconds to take astro photos. It is something you should definitely try and uh, of course with a tripod or just keep the phone face down on the floor. You can also go as fast as 1 by 12,000 second. Most of the professional DSLR cameras are not equipped with such 
fast shutter and uh, you can even freeze a waterfall maybe a car going at 100 kilometers per hour with that kind of fast shutter speed you can control the white balance for a color tone maybe you're taking a picture in the beach or early in the morning you can set the color tone manually instead of relying on filters now manual focus is something you should definitely try especially in videos for photos i will go for touch to focus now for precise focusing you can also actually rely on this uh, green color fringing on the focus level or focus plane in photography it's called focus picking and uh, maybe you're taking a very close-up or macro photo of a flower or maybe an insect this kind of focus picking is uh, useful for focusing on exact area you want like on the eyes of the insect so that's an enthusiast level feature if you are into photography samsung is giving you such professional level features now let's talk about exposure which can be quite annoying sometimes because some area might be overexposed and uh, what you can do is you can tap to focus as well as compensate for the exposure and tapping and holding will also lock the auto exposure and auto focus maybe you are taking a picture and the background of the subject has a very bright light source then you can tap on the subject for setting the exposure and maybe you are taking a photo of your child at the annual function and the stage is brightly lit and overexposed so you can tap on your kid and you will get better exposure and you can tap and hold to lock the exposure so that when you move the camera the exposure doesn't change now there is this metering mode which is also very important you can try matrix or multi-zone metering which basically measures the light intensity at several points and combines the results to find the best exposure there is also center weighted which concentrates on the light source in the central maybe 60 or 70 percent if the subject is in the central part taking 60 percent then this is something you can try or there is this spot metering which measures light intensity of just five percent of the viewfinder so maybe you are taking a picture of this person who has a very bright light source behind him which is making his face very dark then spot metering can measure the light reflected from the person's face and expose properly for that Another very important aspect of this camera is this uh, manual control of your contrast shadows highlights. So look at the shadow of this car and uh, the auto dynamic range might lose some information in the shadow area because of low light but you can make it more visible or let's say get more details uh, making the image flatter that is lowering the shadow levels then use photo editors or maybe filters and make the images punchier or more beautiful you can also control the highlights so if the highlights or brightly exposed areas are losing information you can make it flatter by controlling this so what's the benefit of these flatter images well your images will contain more information about the subject because overexposed or shadow areas lose information or details of the subject so this is something a pro label feature you can definitely try on your s21 ultra which is a really capable smartphone because you need a good sensor with higher dynamic range and also powerful processor so you are getting the best smartphone why don't try something pro level guys let me now share with you some shorthand tricks you can swipe and create a copy of the shutter button and keep it anywhere on the viewfinder for easier access 
Another hidden feature is if you swipe down the shutter button to the bottom edge, you can take burst photos that is multiple photos in a short span, which might be useful for moving objects. You can keep one and delete others. If you tap and hold the shutter button in the photo mode, you can take a video as well as long as you are holding the shutter button. So no need to switch to the video mode. You might miss important shot, but this feature is primarily for short videos because you will be missing video controls or features. Even the aspect ratio will be same as photos that is even 3 to 4. Now you can also create GIFs instead of burst photos. So this is how it works just like the way I have shown you before. So the GIF has been created and uh, it looks really cool ready to be shared on social media high quality. So we love taking selfies, but uh, before you start, we can actually uh, choose from neutral to bright. That is, we can make our selfies default color tone bright. And I'm glad that Samsung is giving us this option because others are actually making our selfies brighter automatically. Sometimes looks uh, too much unnatural, even without any kind of filters or effects. So let's now talk about effects. You can create your own filters, which is one of the best features of Samsung cameras. That is, uh, maybe you have taken a picture at the beach in the sunset or in a cloudy day at sunrise and you love the color tone, you can save it and set this as one of the filters. So next time you take a picture, you can use that picture as a reference or a filter. So just click on the plus icon and select the picture you want to use as a filter. Now I have a tip for you. Maybe you loved a picture of your favorite celebrity online and you want a similar similar kind of look or feel, then you can download that picture, use that as a filter and maybe you can get uh, similar effects on your selfies. So indeed, it's a really cool feature. If the preloaded filters on your Galaxy S21 are not enough, you can download from the Galaxy App Store. There are numerous amazingly beautiful filters you can download and try for free. Now with the next feature, you can even reshape your face, which might be very interesting for people who are on social media, who are always posting selfies and all wants to look thinner, maybe beautiful, bigger eyes. It's all about perspective and there are certain tools to beautify yourself. Like there is this smoothness tool to make your skin look smoother with less showing pimples, pores or any kind of scars. And uh, this is for the tone of your selfies and this is to reshape the jawline to maybe look thinner or more photogenic and uh, the next option is, uh, I don't know how many people will be using it, uh, it's to reshape or maybe uh, enlarge your eyes. But it's there and what I like most about this editor is it looks more natural, doesn't look, you know, uh, reshaped or edited unlike other software editors or other smartphone cameras. Guys, I've talked about shutter speed to take pictures of moving objects to make them freeze. But what about focusing? Well, uh, there is something called tracking autofocus that you can use to take photos of your running kids or maybe a car. Your kid is dancing in a group and you want to focus on your kid only. Maybe you are moving and don't want to lose focus. So just tap on the subject and the camera will intelligently detect the subject and keep the focus on that subject even if the subject moves or you move. More interestingly, if you lose the subject from the framing, if the subject comes back to the viewfinder, the camera will automatically remember the subject and start tracking autofocus. Guys, I don't know whether you are aware of this or not, the 108 megapixel big sensor you have in the main camera can be set to take just 12 megapixel photos. In fact, that's the default resolution. So what it does is it does nona binding, which is basically uh, taking nine pixels, nine surrounding 
relatively noisy pixels into one big clean super pixels uh, which definitely increases the low light sensitivity and dramatically improves the clarity of the pictures so for indoor photos definitely go with the 12 megapixel resolution 108 megapixel gives you a bigger picture but a more noisy and less clean picture so guys this video is getting very long and there will be a second part on the camera department of your new s21 where i will talk primarily about some camera features like the bixby vision which is so interesting you can also create self emojis and uh, you can animate yourself make object or text tracking your face i will also talk about the portrait mode to make your background blur and most importantly i will talk about videos how to take professional quality videos take advantage of different smart tools so if you think this video series is uh, useful then maybe subscribe and keep track of this channel because i will be also uploading some tips and tricks on the user interface and other aspects or other departments you can find the links in the description or in the comment section that's all for now guys thanks a lot for watching